Welcome back to GDPG, everybody. Woo! Yeah, and yeah. whoop, I pushed a button. You. Oh, well, we're jumping in here. Button, yeah. We're playing Thomas Was Alone. We are. I'm so excited. <laughs> <laughs> oh, actually, you know what? Uh, let's, let's grab that remote. We're going to turn up the volume a little bit because we need to be able to hear the yes. audio. We're going to make sure that you guys can hear the voiceover, too. Um, but it helps us for our conversation. Yeah, although I guess we get the little bit of. Oop, that's too loud. We do get a little bit of the uh, that text. Hopefully this will work. But either way, welcome to Thomas Was Alone. We're going to play this. This is a game made by um, Mike Bithell, Bithell, I believe is yep. how you pronounce his name. Yep, and for all those of you that heard the voice, that is Danny Wallace. Um, and I think, Chris, from the research that we were doing, it said he won a BAFTA back in 2013. Yeah. Which is... For voice performance. Which is pretty awesome, all things considered, because... Um, I don't know a lot about the BAFTA awards, but they're usually film focused. You know, dude, BAFTAs are a lot more crazy, but generally when you hear about them in the news, it's films. You hear about the films because the things that people really care about are, right? Um, uh, I suppose I should have stayed on screen a little bit longer for that one. Yeah, for, for this one we may want to because I feel like the narrative is so important. Yeah. And and what's really happening right now is mostly just setting the scene. Although the important thing is is that they drive home the the fact that Thomas was alone, right? Like yes. obviously that's the title of the name or the title of the game. Uh, the title of the name. Yeah, right. Had solved the great um, fall mystery. But I think it's cool. So I guess we'll kind of see this as we keep playing, right? But the story kind of goes that we are programs, yep. uh, or like we're artificial intelligence, right? And we're sort of developing our own personalities and kind of like learning about the world. And so a lot of this is actually really doing a really good job at showing us that because it's like we're presented with a problem, right? Um, yep. And maybe we already jumped ahead a little bit too much, but basically the idea is, is that Thomas realizes, oh, hey, there's an obstacle here. I wish I could do this thing. Maybe if I could, hmm, if I could just, what's the word yeah. for that? Jump? Jump? Oh, I can jump. Splendid. Uh, yeah, right, exactly. And I think they do a good job at the beginning of setting up a very kind of drab world mm -hmm. that Thomas is alone in. It is pretty drab. I mean, if, especially if you look at the colors, Thomas oh, is yeah. really bright. And I, well, I think Thomas pops, which makes it so much better. Mm -hmm. So the the interesting thing about this, too, is like, so this is a good example, right? Where basically they're saying, oh, it's a big jump. Like, can yeah, right? Thomas make it? Well, I guess there's only one way to find out. So this is the whole point of the game and why I think it was so successful mm -hmm. is that they've integrated level design with narrative. Yeah, and yeah, they really have. It's like they make the tutorial fun because... Well, it's not just the tutorial. This well, is the, the whole game. Yeah, it's, no, it's the, the entire whole... game. But I think specifically the tutorial, you don't feel like you're actually in a tutorial, you know? It just feels like it's just part of the narrative. Yeah, it's because Thomas is learning. Yes, yeah, just like we are. And it seemed right? to Thomas that it could let him down at any moment. <laughs> uh, dude, I love, love his voice work. It might even be doing so. <laughs> <laughs> or the player will be letting you down. Yeah, right, exactly. We let this Thomas down. A little dangerous. Oh, but this is actually what that dialogue blurb was actually talking, yes. referring to. And it seemed to Thomas that it could let him down at any moment. Any moment. It's it's interesting too because it's based on. It might even be doing so on purpose. <laughs> so that the dialogue is all timed, um, which I think is interesting because normally I feel like in games with um, verbal cues like that, usually you place kind of trigger points along it. Yeah. Um, and I imagine the reason why they didn't do that in Thomas was alone because it's pretty easy to jump over it. Or, or, well, I suppose that's not necessarily true because you could just make it infinitely tall. Yeah. Um, well, and one of the things where it's like, I've had the problem with a couple of the levels where I went too fast and the narrative didn't finish yes. before I got to the end of the level. Um, I just wondered whether the portals were actually taking him anywhere. But I just knew something so, um, so enthralling about having this wonderful voice kind of guiding you through this story. Um, oh, absolutely. I don't know, it just, it makes me, like, I, when I was playing this game in my own playthrough, it just made me so happy. Like, it's like I, I kind of wanted to keep hearing where the story was going. I think, Chris, you were telling me that this game didn't originally start off with such a big narrative um, focus. Yes, so the original proof of concept of this game, I believe Mike Bethel, 
um, he he made a game in a Flash version of this game, and it was it was called Thomas Was Alone. And I believe he put it on Congregate or something like that. Um, and he, my understanding is, he realized that there was potential there because the players that went into the game they kind of developed stories for or like personalities for each of the, yeah. the different characters in the game. So if you, a little bit of a spoiler, I guess, but there are more characters than just yeah, Thomas. You'll be getting more in a um, few here. It, yeah, I think it's. Maybe even the next scene. That'd be really funny. Uh, that would be kind of <laughs> funny. Just kinda like... um, but it was interesting because so many players kind of create crafted a story about them that the main developer was like, well, maybe there's something more we could do with yeah, this. Yeah, and what's just so interesting to see how a community effectively helped the game get better. Oh, absolutely. Like, well, that's, that, that's, in my opinion, one of the best reasons to uh, open your games in development or at least early versions yeah. of your game to the public um because you never know what they're gonna say that's gonna be so helpful well absolutely and sometimes it's it's a good way to test the waters to see is this actually fun test the waters huh <laughs> he made a mental note here <laughs> for water not good to be avoided <laughs> yeah right oh man i just there's just about the music too that like even though it's like kind of like it's not exactly like a pumped up or anything like that, but the music and the narrative kept me going in this game. Oh yeah! Like when I first got my hands on this, I w I did not stop. Well, when I I, I understand when I uh, when I tested this game out too because I I wrote down some notes because I wanted us to have good dis oh, yeah. discussion points for it. Um, I played maybe like four or five hours into it more than I expected to. Yeah, no, that was it. Like, all of a sudden, like, um, uh, Intangible got me a whole slew of games for Christmas, and um, I referred to him as Indie Claws this past year, and I think he loved that was, it. That was partly because you didn't really know much about indie games. Yeah, I didn't. So Nathan just, or Intangible just hooked me up with so much stuff. And this was probably my second favorite game he hooked me up with. Like, almost my favorite, um, if I wasn't such a big Power Rangers fan, um, but Chroma Squad kind of took that. Uh, Dude, I want to play Chroma Squad yeah, still. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a fun game. I absolutely love it. Um, but no, this game, like, I was so enthralled. And once I beat Chroma Squad, I'm like, let me start Thomas Was Alone. And I was like, I don't want to ever stop. I don't ever. <laughs> Until you did. Until I did. I got <laughs> stuck and I was. Uh, and that's why I'm I playing, folks. In, in case you guys forgot my wonderful poncho run. Oh, yes. Especially episode 11 <laughs> and 10. Uh, good times. Oh, so awful. Is that zone one? I think that yeah, is zone that's one. Yeah, zone one. I like how they. um. How they put these qu these like quotes here to uh, differentiate when you change X, I guess we'll call them. And, well, these are also important because it gives us a bit of background that we yes. aren't getting through the characters. So this is that's how we actually learn that it's a computer program. Yeah, exactly. You get all these little clues, and then this is the first time you get to meet uh, Chris, I think. Yep. And Chris is one of my <laughs> favorite characters. Oh, he's so good. Um, the other thing with those those little scenes is yeah. that those are actually loading scenes. Um, yeah. where, where the little text is going and on. I think it's a very effective loading screen. Oh, absolutely. Very, I think it's better, like, you see some of those AAA titles where they will give you, like, a, um... Where they'll give That's you right. a, um... Like, like, a scene where they just they show the help enemy. text, or oh, they, yeah. they show you, like, and, like, rotate this 3D model, exactly. and it's like... Yeah, look at you, Skyrim. And, uh... <laughs> and Fallout, really Bethesda in general. Oh, my they God. Love. No, dude. With Bethesda, if they gave us like lore about the like, I, I mean, sometimes they give you lore really about the world. Lore? But like, think think about all the books in in Bethesda yeah. games, right? If they used some of that text in each of those loading screens, and they like Dude. presented you that text in chronological order, it would be oh so good. Oh my god, good. I would. It would, be, so it, it would be amazing because then I'd actually spend time reading a lot of that stuff. Because that's why I don't read a lot. I want to read the books, but it's like I only have like. 80 hours I can put into this game. Yeah, I'm gonna right. put it in where I I'm getting the most action. Put 200 hours into this right now. <laughs> I am not there in my life. So, um, real quick, before we get super far off topic, yes. this level design is actually really smart. This is also sort of another tutorial moment. Yes. Um, but they show us, like, okay, um, we have Thomas, we have Chris now, and like Thomas can get anywhere because Thomas is awesome. Um, but then Chris we get Chris, and we're awesome. like, Chris can't really jump. So then we go, yeah, okay. Yeah, a lot of Chris's can't jump. It's true. They're pretty lame, in um, general, I've heard. But, like, we know that Chris has to go on the other side, obviously, obviously. because the the outline is Chris-shaped. Yeah. Um, so it, it's, it's obviously really simple, right? There's 
I feel like most players are going to see this and be like, obviously, I use Thomas, I jump off of Thomas and jump over here. But here's the other important thing is this sets the precedence for the rest of the game on yes. how Thomas will be treated. Yep. And this, so we're going to talk about this at some point in later on. Oh, yeah. Um, but this is why I think the game is actually called Thomas, Thomas was, was Alone. It's because nobody actually acknowledges Thomas other than start... like having opinions about him. Yeah. And so really, it's not about Thomas being alone in the beginning. It's the fact that Thomas never feels like he He's has... one of the group. Yes. And it's kind of, it's a, in a way it's kind of sad, but it's also fun. Oh, absolutely like, it's sad. But it's... I, I really I don't I haven't beaten the game so I, I don't yeah. actually know how it concludes but I hope that it, it like goes through that circle where it gets sad and then gets happy, happy. and then it gets kind of like sad again and then it ends on like a high-ish note yeah right all of a sudden you're just like hey everything is good it's I believe it's a 10 act game too oh wow that's, uh, that's a so lot it's, of content it's, it's a pretty decently long yeah. game in which I've only Not played through content. act 4 I believe. and I've gotten up to 3.10 good job yeah um, but anyway but yeah we will continue this act on in the next episode. So what's our question of the day? Question of the day. Um, I, I don't want to ask about narrative because we skipped over a lot of it. We did. We um, just skipped over a lot of it today. Um, so I guess maybe as far as like actual tutorial design goes, yeah. um, there was actually no tutorial text. Every tutorial text moment was actually integrated into the voiceover in, in the actual narrative. Um, so my question to you is, what are they doing in the level design that actually teaches the player without them having to think? Like, we, we talked a lot about this moment in particular, how it teaches us about Chris. Yeah. Um, but what do they do in the other levels that, like, just makes it intuitive? That's a good one. Cool. Well, thank you for watching. Uh, we will talk much less over the narrative in the yes, next few episodes. It's definitely really um, worth listening to. Absolutely. And and the only reason we talked over a lot of it in this one was just simply because we have a lot to say. Oh yes, there's and, a lot to say about this game. But yeah. if you get farther throughout <laughs> the levels, there's more time in between narrative mm -hmm. and we'll be able to really, really dig in deep. So uh, stick with it. It's going to be good. Yeah. So be sure to vote in the voting thing right now uh, what you want to see in the future, including more of this because right yes. now we only have budgeted uh, seven episodes-ish, maybe more, maybe less. We'll see. Um, we'll kind of see, but be sure to... You can vote on this game and another game. So we'll keep playing this if you vote on this, and then we'll play the other game next. Yeah, we will. So, so don't be shy. Bye, everybody. Bye.